There's a lot of people that are thinking about making insurance a career path or thinking about launching their career, thinking about doing something huge, right? And, and yeah. you have a m ridiculously large agency. I think that there's a lot of agents who are struggling with old school methods. I mean, and, and there's agents who crush it with the old school methods, but for the ones who aren't doing well with the old school methods, what I do might be a great fix. If you are ready to launch your insurance career and do something massive, then my dude, J.R. Ornstein, can help with that. Buddy, thanks for taking the time for a few minutes. Yeah, man, good to see you, Cody. You too, buddy. There's a lot of people that are thinking about making insurance career path. They're thinking about launching their career, thinking about doing something huge, right? And, and yeah. you have a m ridiculously large agency in New York, super <laughs> successful, good looking dude sexy smart all the s's you know keep it coming keep it, keep coming. it coming right uh if you had to pick one word randomly one word to to to, to describe the launch and success of your career what would it be uh i would say relationships Ooh. Yeah, which is which we're going to get into later because that's good that's yeah. so good yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, there's obviously a, a lot of cliches, a lot of words, buzzwords, right, that we all know, right, you know, hustle and, you know, and, uh, and you know, how you're feeding your brain, right, and um, taking bold action, big action, all of the 10x sort of stuff. So no doubt that's all part of it. I'd say that a huge reason why our agency uh, does well um, is because of our ability to build and maintain relationships. It's really all about that. And then uh, after you start the relationship, um, the maintaining is by proving your value. And, uh, you know, of course, we can get into all of that sort of stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And, and that's one thing. When, when I think about you, like, because everybody's got their own little gift, their own thing going on, you know. Yeah. Uh, JR is a Dude, you're a master networker, like phenomenal at relationships, great with people. People like, if someone doesn't love you, they got something wrong with them. That's what I'm saying. Right? <laughs> You've probably thought that your whole life, you know? Of course. <laughs> but where's that come from? Is, 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 has it always been that way for you? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, well, for, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I'm the type of person who uh, I don't mind attention when I'm asking for it. But yeah. I'm naturally more of, a, of an introvert, you know, I, I, I got no problem, you know, uh, spending Saturday night with my wife on the couch just watching TV. I don't need to be out at the bars. I don't need to be at parties. Um, and if I walk into a big, you know, let's say networking event, it's not that I'm the guy who's walking around saying, hey, 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 and just walking up to, you know, circles of strangers. That's not actually my style. Yes. Um, but what I've, what I've done uh, well, I'd say, especially in the last couple of years, is just find ways to have a more natural introduction um, and, then, and then just kind of build upon there and, and never go into a relationship asking for anything, never expecting anything, yeah. uh, but really, you know, hearing people out, seeing what, uh, what they're all about, what they're looking for, what makes them tick, and, uh, and then see, is this a relationship worth pursuing? Yeah, that, that's a big piece, man. Everybody, everybody, everybody is so entitled thinking, you know what, I'm walking in and this, this relationship, they better do for me or I'm never doing for them, you know? Right. And right. you always come into every relationship. Um, like even our relationship, you know, it's always like, you know, Cody, what can I do for you? And, and I'm, and I'm like, yeah. Dude, I gotta be more like JR, man. I gotta, I gotta, you know. that's like, well, Gary Vee had the what? Um, like a give, give, give method, right? Um, yeah. Right, right hook, right hook, you know, door right. jab, 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 right hook, right? Right. And, and it's, it's, I think that's a big thing, a big takeaway right now, huge nugget that you've already just dropped on us is people need to realize that for a relationship to be successful, you have to give a lot and you have to actually try to give more than the other person. Yeah. I, I, I just think that's the overwhelming philosophy for all relationships, period. It's not even about business. I think it, it's it's about personal life. It's all relationships, um, and and I've said I've said this to you before. Even if you had the most selfish intentions, right? It's still the best strategy to give, 
yes. first and yes. to look for reasons to give. So it's just the way that I, I, I look to operate and say, how can I serve the person I'm speaking with? Yeah. Otherwise, um, they have no reason to, to have a relationship with me, to do business with me. And even if they do to start, it's destined to fail if they're not getting yeah. something, right? Yeah. Um, on, 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 on the, ins is insurance a good career path note? What's your answer to that question with, with, a, with just a yes or a no? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm having the best year that I, I've been in business for 13 years. I've had the agency, my agency for 13 years. Wow. 2020 is so far the most productive year we've ever had. And that's during a pandemic. Yeah, 20, so, 2020 is a debacle for most people. Correct. You know, and, um, and, I, and, I, and I say that, you know, obviously not for, for bragging sure. purposes or, you know, to, to make myself look good. I say it because if, if, if you've got a business that can do well during a pandemic, I'd say that's yeah. a pretty good career choice. Absolutely. Right. And, and, and I started in 2007 and we know what happened to the real estate market and what happened to the economy right after that. And even in those years in 2008, where more than half of my town, where my, where my offices was completely empty, no businesses, right? right? It was ghost town. We were growing every year. Why? Because insurance is, in, is recession proof. That's why. Yeah. Because everyone still has to have it no matter what. And yes, there might be times when people are buying less cars or they're buying less houses, but there's still millions of cars, houses, and lives. If we're talking about life insurance, everyone's still around anyway. They still have to have it, you know? And when times are tough, maybe they shop more. Fine. That means I've got more ears that are willing to listen. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's, that's, that's such a phenomenal story to, to hear about. And to, because if you think about, there's a lot of people considering insurance as a career or not considering insurance as a career and never would, right? You got both sides of the coin. Yeah. A lot of people are losing their, their, their jobs. It, they're losing their career, if you will, um, because of everything going on in the world. And you mentioned ins insurance is a recession-proof business. You know, it really is. Like, look 100%. at this. Yeah, you, you, you just said that your entire team is working. Well, you, I don't know if you said it yet. Your entire team is working remote, and you're going to have the best month you've ever had in your career. Not the last few months, not this year, not compared to last year. Yeah. In your career. That's unbelievable. And, and yeah. what do you attribute to that? My team, my team, my team. They, there he I, goes, giving it, giving it to everybody else again. 100%, 100%. You know, you got a great uh, team, by the way. Awesome. I, thank you. Uh, I, I agree. And, uh, and I, I thank them all the time um, because I can't help myself because I really do appreciate uh, what they do. Yeah. Um, and I've been in their shoes. I, I, I you know, I've been a, a team member for, uh, for an insurance agency before, and it is a juggling act. It can be tedious. You know, it's a lot of work, lots of incoming and expectations. Um, and then when we went remote, you know, you just never know how people are going to react, right? Is it, are they going to up their game? Is it going to be, are there going to be too many distractions? A lot of pluses and minuses, but, um, that's why, you know, I feel very lucky and blessed because my team is very mature yeah. and did not think when we went remote that it's all right, now I'm home and I'm just going to be watching Netflix and pretending I'm working all day. They're working their butts off. They're working their butts off. Yeah. Um, and our phones ring all day. So we can't, we, there's, there's no, uh, there's no room to be lounging anyway. So they're working their butts off. And, you know, I just look at my role. Uh, a huge part of my role is to make sure that, we're communicating on a regular basis. We're meeting on a regular basis. Um, the vision is clear. Our yeah. strategy is clear. Um, we are working out our, our sales muscles every day with, you know, with role playing and just talking about what's working, what's not working. And so even though we're not physically uh, together, we're yeah. Zooming every day and we're having the same conversations. And, uh, and arguably we're having even better meetings uh, virtually uh, than we were before. I mean, there, again, there's pluses and minuses, but we're just making the time and it's all eyes on each other. And we're, you know, we're, we're growing every day. Yeah. What, what's for, for, for somebody that's like curious about insurance, you know, or, or, or not doing well, 
what's the what's the day to day look like for one of your team members, and then also for you? So sure. So for the team members, you know, it depends on what their role is. I've got team members that are primarily all service and administration, yeah. so they're taking incoming calls about billing. Um, billing questions, making changes, you know, that's all service, you know, account management. And then for the sales team, um, a good portion of their day is either um, quoting people from incoming referrals, all right, or if they're picking up the phone with existing clients, they're helping them. And, you know, we always talk about the plus one, right? Find the lowest hanging fruit and the lowest hanging fruit is what they have the highest propensity to, to want and, or need. And so if we see someone has their auto in their home with us and we don't see they have life insurance, we are bringing it up and we're telling them that it's the most important responsibility that we have. Yeah. Um, and so we have to be consistent with that. How, how's, the, how's the COVID rebuttal I gave you guys? How's that working out? Well, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Okay, good. So, you know, I mean, uh, we're doing... Uh, very well. I think we're still leading our territory in life premium. So uh, for the year so far, so you know, yeah. So we're 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 doing well with that, and we're just you know I'll I'll tell you. The you know they're selling all day. They're selling all day, and when they're not selling, they're also you know reaching out to their partners and always making sure that they're in front of them, not physically these days, but they're always communicating with them so that no one's ever forgotten. Just offering to help. Hey, whatever I can do for you. So they're constantly marketing themselves and quoting all day. And, that, and that's a big part of it, just closing as much business. And we track our activities, you know, how many times yeah. are we talking about things? Um, how many quotes have we given? How many sales did we make? You know, how much premium and all of that. And we end every day. Um, one of my team members that's a leader in our team sends out an email to the team, which we call the half, in the middle of the day, we have the halftime report. So that's just they here's where we are halfway to what our goal is. And so it's, hey, we've already meet, we already matched it, great job. Or, yeah. hey, we've got, you know, we've done uh, six, we need two more of this, you know, let's go, let's go. And then uh, we have an end of day report, which is not exactly when the end of day is, it's about, a, with about an hour or two before we're truly done, which is to yeah. say, if we're close, it's like, all right, guys, let's just pick it up a little bit that's for that cool. last lap, you know? I, I love that. What, what's, what's, what are those goals? So we, we are looking, every um, team member is looking to get at least one new household per day. Mm. All right. So that's how we, we add it up. Um, and sometimes we destroy it. Sometimes, you know, or app count, you know, might be saying uh, we want at least, let's say, 10 uh, per day. Sometimes we, you know, you can get seven or eight in a day. You can have, and then the next day might be 17, 18, 20. But we're averaging it out, and we've been outpacing our goals. So, but um, but what I don't do, and and of course, there's all different types of uh, of ways of, of doing this. You know, some people like to make goals so huge, rather like Grant Cardone, right? Make the goal so big that even if you fall short, you know, you still won, right? You still did a great job. Sure. Some salespeople uh, don't react well to that, right? They get discouraged and they say, "Well, I'm so far behind." I'm mentally throwing in the flag, oh, right? Keep going. Yeah, throwing yeah. Throwing in the towel, yeah. And, and so for us, I don't just, you know, I want to make sure that we have as many wins as possible yeah. and that we're always striving to just get a little bit better, a little bit better. So we keep our, our carrot a little closer to us and yeah. that carrot eventually gets further and further away, but it's just not starting miles away, you know? Right. And, and you, yeah, you, you, you always do a really good job of, of keeping the team engaged, which is the most, that's, that's probably the toughest thing of having a, a, a sales team and a team in general. How many yeah. team members, how many team members do you have now? Eight. Okay. Including you or not including you? Not including me. Okay. And, and have you, how many have you added? Have you added any since COVID or no? No, not since COVID. I have yeah. someone who's, well, I have someone who's uh, starting next month. Oh, good. Oh, good. And, yeah. and how, how many are sales? How many are service? I mean, they're all potentially looking for deals, obviously, but how, yep. what's the breakdown of those eight? Um, of the eight, you, you, you know, you're going to, you're probably going to, you may be surprised by it. Of the eight, it's, I, I could say four, I could say five, they're sales because some people have a little bit of, they do both. But, um, but 
we'll call it we'll call it four or five in sales. The rest are service. Um, I need to the person that's going to be joining us in July um, is a sales assistant because we've got one of the greatest problems you could ever have, which is the salespeople have too much uh, paperwork, post sale application work, all of the stuff that happens after you know you take money. And it's taking them away from more time they could be spending just closing sales. So uh, I need, you know, and we already do that, you know, they're not, yeah. the sales team isn't even doing all the paperwork, but we need to take more off of their desk so that they can just be having the conversation and closing sales all day and just have a little bit more of a factory line approach. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. It's the best. Yeah. We're, we're closing too many deals, you know, that, that I need someone to help with the paperwork so I can go back and keep closing deals, you know, that's, which that's part of the system that you've created. And what you do an amazing job of is most people struggle with, you mentioned a lot of things people struggle with and some, a lot of things you're doing really well. One thing people struggle with the most is, you know, where's the sale coming from, right? Um, yeah. The prospecting piece, the marketing piece uh, for you, you've got it in a few different ways. Um, but, but you guys do a good job of, of really figuring out that piece first so that you have somebody to talk to and that you're busy. I think a lot of agencies like yours don't know where the next sale is coming from. Yeah. You know, in, in my business, a lot of people are, are buying uh, leads that are sold to all different agents. And so, right. We talk about that, that kind of uh, used to start off with lending tree on the mortgage side, that whole approach, they fill out a form and they're getting, hounded by a lot of different agents um, that is rigorous for a salesperson. It is an enormous amount of time hunting down someone that may never answer. Um, and a lot of agents, and there's plenty of agents that, that do very well with that. Um, it hasn't been our approach. It hasn't been our approach. Um, and just that, and no differently than agencies that do extremely well uh, with just straight up telemarketing, right? Awesome. You know, um, what I have found is more my style and what I found my team is just more comfortable with, which A, I think makes them more productive and have less burnout, yes. is spending less time um, hunting, uh, you know, individuals and more time developing the relationships, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, in, so in the life insurance world, uh, the, there's the ex expression, right? The, the, the line that pe the life insurance agents used to use back in the day, I think it might've been like a Ben Feldman thing from way, way back in the day. But he would say, if you had a golden goose in your backyard laying golden eggs, would it make more sense to insure the eggs or the goose, right? And of course you are the goose, right? And so, and, and you're making money for your, for your family. So you should be insuring yourself. That's why you need life insurance. And so I applied the same method in terms of marketing all right, and prospecting is instead of my team spending all their time hunting the eggs, meaning the customers, I want them hunting the relationships and finding their own, their own golden geese that are going to be supplying them with the opportunities, the quoting opportunities all day. So starting off when someone is new to the business, they don't have those relationships. And that's why while they're training and while they are doing some, let's say telemarketing or calling leads to get the experience of having conversations, they need to be spending a lot of time finding people who are in position to refer to you and that more importantly, you can add value to them, right? So it can't be, all right, I got to find people who are going to give me stuff. That's the wrong mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ultimately you are looking for someone who's going to be supplying you opportunity, but to find those people and to find, you know, to start that relationship and maintain it, it has to be, all right, who are the people who are in position to refer to me, but what can I do for them? Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm doing for them? What's helping their business? Yeah. If you don't have a plan for how you're helping your business, helping their business, and you can't articulate it well to them, mm -hmm. then there's no reason why they're going to do business with you. You're just another person saying, send to me. So you have to be, the way I look at it is to be successful this way, you have to be as good, if not better, selling how you can help someone else's business then how much you are, how good you are selling someone on buying insurance or why they should refer to you, right? right. That's, it, it's a little bit of the opposite because, yeah. you know, so if I'm talking to any potential referral partner, I'm going into saying, okay, tell me about, you know, what would help you. 
Are you working with someone? What works, what doesn't work? All those types of things. Tell me more about the business. And okay, so here's something I could do. What if I could do this for you, right? Or giving the flexibility to say, you know what? I've got partners who they want to have total control in the beginning yeah, of, of, you know, in terms of a referral. Or you've got other people that say, here's the name and number, just take it. You know, there's, and so we adjust. So we don't go to them and say, here's how we work. Yeah. We go to them and say, how do you like to work? What would be best for you? You know, and so we allow them to customize the experience with us. And if we're doing it right, we are in position to say, we're doing this service for you and we don't even charge you for it. Mm. You know what I mean? It should yeah. be that we're, we're so good to them that we would have a right to say, we're going to charge you for this, even though yeah. we're the ones getting the referrals, right? right? We have to be helping their business so much that we can almost have the right, almost have the right to say, we charge a fee, but we're not. So, so explain that. How could you help a referral partner's business? Okay, so let, let's just, let's use an example of, uh, it could be a loan officer, for example, you know, regarding homeowners insurance, yeah. right? How am I helping them? How am I helping them, right? Well, their goal is to close on as many loans as possible. Yes. Right? So how do I help them close on the loan? Uh, a few different ways is, you know, now everyone could say, listen, I'm, I'm quick and I'm cheap. That's what the insurance guys are going to say, right? Quick and I'm cheap. And every single one is going to say that. It's just like you call Verizon, they're going to say, I have the best customer service. You call at and I have the best customer. So everyone says the same thing. So really, what, what is separating you? Mm. It starts off with, and, and this is what I tell my team, it's not going to be as much about your words as it's going to be the feeling that they get from you. If they don't like you, they're not going to do business with you. Mm. And, and I, what I found is I feel most connected with people who talk to me like a friend, not people who are trying to sound professional and try to say the buzzwords and are clearly speaking script. Yes. Right? I want a more natural approach. Um, you know, there's that, that old expression, you, you know, people, um, they used to talk about this in politics, you vote for the person that you feel like you'd want to have a beer with. Well, I feel like that with business. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so when we're talking to them, it's speaking their language and getting really comfortable and winning that likability factor. Exactly. Because, because even if you do have the best service and you're in position to do the best for them, um, they don't care. They're not going to be able to see past the fact that they don't like you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we have to be winning them over and talking about their business. The more they talk about their business, the more they're going to like us and the more we learn what are their buttons? What is it that they need? Right. What's going to make them happy? What's going to help their business? So in many cases, that might just be the fact that we offer uh, truly, I, you know, our reliability and our availability trumps most of our competition. It's because most of our competition is not taking a call or going to run a quote for you at 10 p.m. tonight. I can guarantee you someone on my team, if given the opportunity, will run a quote on everything you need at 10 p.m. tonight. All right. That's so all. Most, right. So most mortgage brokers aren't doing that. So that's a separator. All right. Um, and then the other is in terms of coverages and working with banks, sometimes for a loan officer, the, the trouble might be, hey, man, I this we need to have this much coverage because that's what the bank requires but we need to get the price down here and so we're going to work with the client and we're going to make sure that we are, we are you know looking at all of their options to make sure that we can get the price that they need and quite frankly if after the closing we have to bump things back up right or make certain changes so that we both satisfy what the bank needs but never sacrifice the proper coverage for the for the client right. and then then we're going to do that, but we're going to work with them to make sure that, you know, that the loan is closed and the client is happy. And that the other part is that if, if their client, if the loan officer's client, if the car salesperson's client, if they are not going back to them and saying, thank you for referring JR or any one of my team members, if they're, if we're not making them look good, then we didn't do their job. Yep. You know, so we talk about that, but it's so much more based. I just feel like it's so much more based on um, getting to know someone with it before you even talk to talk business, yes. you know, and, and the feeling of it. And that's just how that's just how we do all of our business. It's less it's less scripted and it's more about 
being your authentic self, which is kind of um, a popular term a lot lately, right? But I just feel that, that that's how we sell everything is I want everyone to feel totally comfortable being themselves. So they don't have to think about what they're gonna say. They just speak from the heart and just say, what can I do to help you? And if you are, if you're, if you're comfortable with who you are and you're looking out for their interest and you're genuine and they feel like this is an honest person, they will be willing to spend more money or refer to you knowing that you might be more money yeah. than someone yeah. else because they're comfortable and they trust you. And that's just, that's such a huge factor that dwarfs having the right words. Right? Yes. I, I hope people are taking notes because you are dropping some absolute gold right now. Um, I'm telling you, for someone wanting to scale an insurance agency and, and really, you know, launch this thing, um, you've mentioned a lot of amazing things. About how many referrals, um, inbound leads, whatever you want to call them, do you, do, do you and your team see per day or per week or per month? Let's take a look here. Well, it certainly varies from day to day because we are, sure. we are putting a lot of stock in the volume from our referral partners, right? So just for example, on the auto insurance side, when the COVID hit New York really bad, right? When that hit, the dealerships were shut down. Yes. So no one could buy a car. Yes. Because they, they, and the DMV was shut down, so no one could register a car. Mm. Even if they were buying from a family member, things were just shut down. So that hit us in April. So in April, we took a, we took a punch because you know, it had nothing to do with our ability or our strategy. It just had to be that our referral partners were essentially shut down. Yeah. You know, but on any given day, we've got, you know, let's say each, I mean, each person, I, you know, I've got one team member who could easily, I mean, it's just, it's normal that you know, she's getting 12 referrals in a day. That's oh, 12, that's so freaking that, great. That's, that's 12 quotes, right? With not one outgoing phone call to make it happen. Right. And so that's what I'm talking about in terms of you have to hunt the, the geese. That's right? unbelievable, because, bro. Like that's freaking crazy. I, I'm like, yeah. You know, I, and others might be getting two, three or four if, based on how new they are and how long they've been doing yeah. it. But we talk about is that it's the snowball, right? You start right. off, you don't have the relationships. You haven't been doing this long enough. You know what I mean? You're, yeah, you're, yeah. It's hard to fake that you're not really an expert sometimes. Yeah, you take some time before sure. you're going to get that trust from people. But eventually, you get one or two. I was talking to my team this morning, right? So I've got one team member, the one I just referenced to, you know, on any given day could easily get 12, right? Oh, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right? And part of the reason why that's happened is because when she started a relationship with one organization, with one individual, that individual was so happy that he told his coworker, who told his coworker and coworker. And then before you know it, you've got eight people in this organization who all love us and yeah. they're all referring. So now you got, you know, it's eight people all from one company yes. referring to us. So it spreads, you do a good job, the word spreads. Just well, like just like it would if you're telling your family or, or friend, you know, hey, go get a quote. But it yep. works on the, you know, on the institutional side of it as well. But most people are, most people hear 12 from, to inbound to one person, they're never going to believe it. But, and I can, I can use but because I'm, I'm, I'm meaning to erase what I just said. Because I've been in your office and I've seen it firsthand. Like you've you've took their phone and showed me like, here's another one, you know? And I'm like, I, it was, it was amazing to see, like, it was fun. And that's, that's one of the reasons why um, people just need to, like, that's why I love putting people like you on here uh, because people need to hear from people like JR that are doing big things that understand what's going on in the world, that understand that insurance agents are struggling during, during insurance agents struggle in general. Yeah. They're struggling even more during this and, and it shouldn't be the case. Um, and someone like you has a message and a story that's really impressive. Uh, Thanks, I got a few more, I got a few more minutes. What, what, what's a, what's, what, what's, what's a, what's something or a couple things that, that you want to, if you're out there talking to a new agent or someone that's considering insurance or, or someone that's struggling, maybe they're in one of those three buckets. Yeah. Um, 
or they're in another bucket and they want to become an agency owner like you, you know, what, what's that look like? And, and, and what's some tips and feedback that you can give to, to those different people? Well, because insurance is a product that everyone has, right. It's, it's commonly referred to as a commodity, yes. right. And, and the, the average customer, that's how they think of it. It's all the same. Who's got the best price. So most of the conversations begin with the customer having that philosophy. Yeah. And so to be successful, whether it's growing your own agency, um, with teaching your agents below you uh, of how to, um, you know, what the sales process is and how those conversations go, it has to be designed to minimize the price factor, dissolve it as much as possible so that when you finally get to the price, because we eventually have to make an offer, they're thinking, damn, I thought it was going to be a lot more, even if it is more than what yeah. they're currently paying. Yeah. We should be beefing up the value so much that the person's just happy you weren't double what they're currently paying. Yes. Right? And so you need to have the volume of opportunity. So you have to develop those relationships that so you have people to speak with. And if you don't, then you just have to hit the phones, right? You're, you know, whether it's phones, it's social media and you know, relationships, or it's, you know, um, networking groups, you know, all of that sort of stuff to, to have people to speak with. And even if it's, you know, social gatherings at nights and sure. weekends, they all have insurance. They all have a roof over their head or most of them drive a car. So everyone's a, a potential client or referral source. There's no doubt about it. But once you have the opportunity, then it's just a matter of, well, what do you do with it? Yeah. Right. And the one thing that we cannot, we have no control over, and, every, and agents have to have the right mindset with this, is we have no control over what the price is going to be from the insurance carrier. No control. And we don't know what it is while we're talking to them. Up until the point where you press that calculate button, you don't know what number is going to come up. You might have a hint that it's going to be kind of bad if they say I had three accidents and you know all sure. of that sort of stuff. But you have no idea what the price is. And even if the price is terrible, if it's really high, it's all relative. So we may tell somebody, well, your, your insurance is $700 a month. And most people in the United States would say, are you kidding me? You should be riding a bicycle. Why would you spend $700 on uh, insurance? Well, if, the, if that guy was spending $800 a month with Geico before, then you just saved them 100 bucks. Yeah. So now it's, really, now it's a really good deal. So it's all relative, right? Totally. But, but what, what I talk to my team about is I, I, I have this thing where I call it, it's, it's the red zone, the yellow zone and the green zone, all right? When they give, when they run the quote, and they're building the value the whole time, they press that calculate button, if the price comes up and we're hundreds of dollars more, right? It's in the red zone, it's okay. You're not gonna make that sale. It ain't happening, okay? Move on, I don't want you dwelling on it. Oh my God, our rate stinks, move on. And set a date to follow up because maybe a claim falls off, a ticket falls off, we're, we're, but we're moving on. We're not gonna make the sale today. It's not a good offer, fine. Yeah. And on the, all the way on the other side, you got the green zone, which is we're less money, we're giving more coverage. This is a no brainer. 10 out of 10 should be sold. Right. Yeah. It's the yellow zone that I think separates um, the men from the boys, as they say. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. That's, it's the yellow zone. It's where maybe you're only $5 less, or maybe you're $10 more. You're in the zone where if it's all based on price, they're, they're not looking to move, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, you know, well, what am I, what, why am I going to go through this? Why am I going to give all this information? Why do I have to deal with paperwork? You're not even really saving me that much anyway. Well, the only way that they're going to do that is that they, if they're thinking they're going to get a huge upgrade, right? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, if you, if you drive uh, an average vehicle, let's just say it's a, a, a Toyota, and someone says, well, you can have a Mercedes and it's only, your payment's only going to be $10 more a month, then most people wouldn't make that leap. Yep. Because they, why? Because it's a, such a huge upgrade. It's such a great value. So we have to win the yellow zone. So we concentrate on, all on winning the yellow zone, right? Which is when it's not blatantly obvious that they should be switching because we're just saving them a ton of money. How do you make sure that they perceive the value to be so great that they are hopping on that, up, you know, hopping on and, and, and giving us their business? That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do something unique as we close out. Uh, there's going to be agency owner that listen to this that says, dude, I want one of my reps to get 240 inbound referrals a month, you know, 
Uh, is it okay if they email me, Cody at CodyAskins.com, and then I get the three of us on a three-way call? Yeah, of course. Okay. I, I want to do that just because there's going to be people that out there that need that, that maybe would like to spend an hour with you to really learn how yeah. they can how they can use massive success in their agency and, and really ramp that up. Um, any thoughts there? Yeah, well, I, I, I'd love to help out. I think that there's a lot of agents who are struggling with old school methods. I mean, and, and there's agents who crush it with the old school methods, but for the ones who aren't doing well with the old school methods, what I do might be a, a great uh, fix, yeah. you know, because it, it, it works for us. And in, in my belief, and I know my team agrees with me, they much prefer have spending their day um, stressed out about getting to all the quotes they have to do rather than stressed out about where am I going to get my next quote? Yeah. That's unbelievable. You know what I mean? That's awesome. So, it, you know, for, so for an agent that says, you know what, I don't want to make 300 calls a day. That makes me miserable. I'm going to burn out. I hate it, but I yeah. still want other ways of getting business. Then I got no problem getting on a call with you and someone else and kind of talking detail, a little bit more details of, you know, about how we get that done. Yes. Yes. Awesome, buddy. Thank you very much. That's huge. Okay. So if you're out there, if you're an agency owner out there and you're like, man, this JR dude is freaking too legit to quit. And I got to meet this guy, you know, um, email me, Cody, Cody Askins. I'll set up a call. I'll even jump on it just because this dude is a machine. Uh, dude, you are doing bigger things than you realize. You get an incredible team. You're an amazing dude. Thanks, uh, man. And thank you for, for spending some time with us and sharing all the secrets of why insurance is a good career path, how you can launch your career, and how you can scale an agency. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate all your support. And, uh, you know, it's uh, great to have you as a friend. And uh, it's awesome to be, uh, you know, on the podcast. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank, thank you guys for watching. Hey, you love this video and you want some brain food? I got five books that every new insurance agent should read. Go watch that. Grab the books. See you over there. When you read a book, when you go to an event, when you listen to a book, when you go to a mastermind, when you buy a university,